Hi everyone, Rich Demidio here. In this video, I wanted to walk you through a simulation of a typical observing session. It will include all the components that we've talked about to date, tying it all nicely together for you. So, you can see I've already launched Sky Safari. If I am going to start an observing uh, session, the first thing I typically do is go to the Observe button and create a new session. A session object you might recall um, I mentioned briefly in some prior videos as basically a bucket to record all the observations during a particular uh, period of time. You can see I have numerous sessions here. If I just open up one of my prior sessions, you'll see that there's a name, there's a site, and you can pick the appropriate site. Uh, it automatically creates the start time, and then the ending time is based on the last observation associated with this session, and then finally the comments. And in the comments field, I typically like to log the moon phase and then scene and transparency. Uh, scene, I typically base on a sky clock, you know, so values like fair, average, above average. Uh, transparency, I base it on the number of stars that I could see in a little dipper. That's defined by the Astronomy League scale from uh, 1 to 7. Um, most of the time, my skies are typically 4, 5, or 6, uh, which, is, which is pretty good. Um, 4 stars typically uh, is the 4 stars in the, in the Little Dipper, the bowl portion. If you could see all those, you're dealing with like Mag 5 skies, so that would be like a transparency of 5, just as an example. Okay, so I mentioned that I want to create a new session, so, so I click on that little Create button. The comments I typically dictate, you know, you'll give it some type of name here. I'll just leave it as a default, fill in the location, and I'm all set. So the next thing I typically do is we'll go through the scope display and just set the particular scope parameters. Um, the last session I used my Obsession 18. I think for this session we'll be using the uh, Starmaster O Classic and it's 17 millimeter eyepiece is good. That's the one I'm going to put in. Again, you can click on that and change it if necessary. Remember, um, the show even if not connected, the telescope needs to be enabled. And this scope does have Telrad circles, so I'm going to leave that enabled. So that part is good. And then I'm going to go choose my observing list. So I think we'll go ahead and pick perhaps the um, Caldwell list. This might be kind of interesting, huh? So we'll pick this Caldwell list that I had set up for a particular time. Remember that Actions and Settings button? I want to highlight the objects, so I'll see those in the field as well and I'm going to sort it by my default order but you can see there's many different ways of, of sorting uh, as well. So once I've done that recall you can go to that little uh, bullet list button go to show list here's our Caldwin list let's say I want to look up um, this particular galaxy in Andromeda NGC 891 I'm going to click on it I'm going to center I will do my pinching, I'll do all of my alignment member things such as using uh, the buttons up here that may help. I may have to use a flip here. I may even turn, and I'm actually turning my iPhone right now. Um, I may have to turn it to have the orientation match. So we pretend that I've gone through and done all that and I want to read more about the object so I can go to object info. And then from here, I've decided, you know what, I'm going to create a new observation. How about, before I do that, have I seen any? So if I do show observations, I'll say, oh yeah, look at that. I did actually uh, do an observation, and I can go ahead and, and read that. But perhaps tonight, this is a new observation. So I'll hit that create new observation. I will dictate my comments. It's with this session. It's with this observing list. And this is a telescope and eyepiece I'm using. So you'll imagine I do that dictation, but I'll just, you know, type in some gobbledygook here. Um, typically after that, I might have to do some spell correcting. Um, sometimes I do it in real time. Most of the time I wait till after my session is done and, and do that, you know, some other time, typically the next day. 
So I've created my session now, and so I'm good there. And maybe I scroll up and I see, I don't see any other objects here that are fairly close by, but a couple things may have caught my attention here. Jeez, M34, what's that all about? So I can click on it, I can read the info, I can hit center, I can pinch and so forth. Say, gee, that's kind of neat. And why don't we go ahead and, you know, create a new observation from that one as well. Again, some gobbledygook. Everything else looks good here. So pretend that we've done that and we've gone through and done that for a few observations. I might want to go back to my session now and see, gee, I've got two objects uh, for this session, but what are those objects? Well, you can find that out by going to observations and then under observations you'll see you have several choices here including the sessions so that's what's nice about this is I can click on it from here and here are the two objects I've looked at here's my log entries for them and and so forth so that is the pretty much the simple use case just to to summarize that you go through and you will create a session once you've done your session you typically review your scope display and then you'll go through and set up your observing list and then when you do that remember to hit that button here if you want to see see those on the screen and then once we've done that we go through and go to our observing list and do our observations so we'll pick on something and then we either go and we might look at our, obs our, our observations so here's all the observations for this object or we perhaps will go through and create a new one and then just uh, rinse and repeat so that summarizes the, the use case, which has uh, tried to tie in everything I've talked about in the prior videos. Um, in subsequent videos, I'll likely pick some specific topics and go into more detail. Um, even topics involving post-processing of your astronomy logs and reporting and, and so forth. So hopefully this has been enjoyable um, and useful. Thanks for watching and clear skies.